Well, first of all, I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone. My name is Rosalind Lacey. I'm with Realco Company Incorporated. We've been in business since 61. Uh, I'm second generation and uh, we, we are general class A contractors uh, specializing in environmental services, uh, basically on septic and water. Uh, so I came to the business in 2006 to join my father to help take it to the next level. And uh, now I'm the one of the owners that own that that require that have the license, you know, for uh, on-site wastewater treatment systems. So I work with a lot of realtors, um, homeowners, and some commercial. Uh, but my bread of bread and butter comes from um, repair and installation, you know. So basically. Um, what I've learned over the years is that when I've worked with a lot of real estate agents, they're not too familiar with what's entailed in a septic. You know, a lot of people think septic is not as important as the home inspection, but it overrides the home inspection because if you don't have good sanitation, then your house can be condemned. Okay. So basically, um, a, lot, a lot of people call us and they say, oh, we really hadn't heard about you guys, but we used to go by the name of Lead Better Septic Tank Service, which people, a lot of people knows about that. But we've been having Realco since 1981, the name, okay? So basically, um, when a person comes and uh, inquire about the septic, sometimes they call when it's too late and we, we really try to, uh, you know, save them from, uh, and say, okay, well, let's slow down. Let's let's see, has anybody else ever come and did a septic inspection? Okay. And let me, before I even get to that, let me just explain to you how septic works <clears throat> and the reason why you have to have a septic system. Well, basically uh, going through the city and if you're living in a not, it doesn't have to be country, but it's like suburb area that does not, that, that has not been uh, included in HRSD um, sanitation, then the person is responsible for their own uh, on-site wastewater treatment systems. Okay, and they uh, they can be. It's, it's about. It's a very complex um, uh, industry. Uh, in the last ten years, we have gotten more professional, and you definitely have to be licensed. Uh, to, to actually be able to do an inspection now. You didn't have to, years ago in the 70s, a homeowner could actually do their own uh, repair work, but not anymore. They have really broke it down to different segments. So we have done all segments. We first started perking the land. Uh, from that, uh, we um, repair and we, and see, when you come to us, we're kind of like a one-stop shop. Okay, so let's, let me go back and tell you how a septic works. <clears throat> so what happens when you flush the toilet, and if you're not on city sewage, it goes into a holding tank, which we call the trash tank, okay? The trash tank has levels in it. It has a, 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 a scum, a liquid, and a sludge level, okay? And so a septic tank will take care of the uh, property as long as the homeowner takes care of it. It's just like having maintenance done to your car, okay? So basically, um, I always tell my people, I said, well, whoever's in the house, um, what, what are you putting down the kitchen sink? Because nowadays, everything goes into the septic system, okay? The trash tank, okay? All the waste goes to the bottom, then it fills up the water, and then it, then it has a scum level where when you, if you're a pumper, you're gonna go and open that uh, tank and when you open that tank, you find out what, how this septic, septic is. A lot of people say, oh, septic, oh, it's so nasty. But it's really not, not nasty. You know, it just depends on how you treat it, how it's been treated. Okay, it makes its own bacteria and it has gases and stuff too. But I guess you probably don't want to know all that. But anyway, so as a real estate agent, when you find that you're on a septic, you want to ask the homeowner, when was the last time they have it serviced? Okay. If they don't really know and they said they don't have, oh, we've never had problems with it. Well, you know, I listen to that, but it, not until you open up that septic tank and open up the distributor box that sits behind the septic tank 
and then it goes into your leach fields, which is, we also call them drain field lines, okay? And so every time you dump waste in that tank, of course, the waste is always going to be at the bottom. But the more years that you wait to have that septic system pumped or clean, then that waste rises to the top, starts mixing into the water, which produces sludge. And that sludge gets into the drain field line. And that's when you start having problems, OK? Uh, but if the person is very particular about what they're putting down the kitchen sink, and they actually have that septic clean at least every three to five years, depending on how many people that's in the household. So that's one of the things that you want to ask. You ask the, your, your potential client, well, you're on a septic. When was the last time you had it pumped or have it serviced? And if they say, oh, I, I've, I've never had it done, well, then you want a red flag. You, you say, well, OK. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a failed system, but it does need to have some attention taken, you know, taken to it. Um, so um, a lot of people are afraid of septics, but it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, and then you have, that's the conventional system. Then you have other systems that run by uh, filtration, like uh, filters. And then you have, uh, when you see those septic systems that have mounds in them, those are the kind of advanced systems that work by <clears throat> a lot of control pumps, panels, alarms, time dose, and um, stuff like that. So let's see. So anyway, the bottom line is when you get a property that has a septic tank or a system, I mean, it really is a system, you ask the homeowner, when was the last time you had a service? That's one of the one number key things I want you to remember. And if you have a, if they don't know, well, you, well, that's one of the things that you want to go ahead and get done kind of right away even before the home inspection, if you can, okay? Because if you find, find out that that septic tank is not meeting the qualifications, uh, it's either gonna uh, need attention replaced or it might can uh, be uh, restored back to original to feel working. So uh, let's see, what else can I say? Um, while I'm thinking of something, anybody got any questions? Yeah, so I was able to write down a couple questions from the people. Um, what is something bad that would go into the tank? Okay, okay. The things that you wanna stay away from, you wanna stay away from grease, okay? Grease is the number one thing that kills a tank. When I say grease, I mean like kitchen grease, okay? Mm -hmm. Not only on septic, but it also is not good for a uh, city sewage okay because what happens is once you get grease down the kitchen sink uh, it tends to stick to the sides of the pipe and causes backup you know it, you know the other thing that's not good for a septic is a whole lot using a whole lot of chemicals like uh stuff that's uh like paint thinners uh, uh antibacterial soaps and also bleach now you probably say bleach antibacterial well the reason why is because the septic system really makes its own bacteria, okay? Um, and so when you start putting overkills of bleach and antibacterial soap, you're actually killing the performance of how it uh, breaks down the waste, the paper, and all of that. Uh, so you want to kind of stay away from that. They also tell us that it's not even good to have a garbage disposal on your septic system, you know? Uh, that's not the best, you know, they, but people do have them. But I, I think the garbage disposal system can be kind of okay on a conventional system. But when you start getting into those alternative systems, those engineered draw systems, you don't want a uh, garbage disposal. You know, you want, you don't want uh, the, uh, the other thing I tell my customers, try to stay away from thick paper. Okay. Uh, like, paper towels, and even those um, uh, female hygiene stuff, you know, that we use as females, have to use as females, that's not really good. Uh, let's see, they're really thick paper, the paper towels, even if baby flush is, is not good. Because all you, because really what you want to go in there is just the waste in the water, you know, and of course, everything is connected 
to the septa tank. You know, you got your showers going in there. You have your um, uh, your wash machine, your kitchen sink, and all of that. You know, if you, all your plumbing is feeding to that one tank. Okay, and 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 basically what it's doing is once it when it go comes out of the tank because inside the tank is an inlet T and an outlet T. Okay, so it's gonna when you know that the septic tank is working properly, it's a certain level in that tank that should be at, it should be at all times, okay? That, that lets you know that, oh, this septic tank is, is working like it should. That means it's dispersing or dispensing the wastewater back into the, the environment. And you say, oh, why are you doing that? Well, basically, when it comes through the distributor box and goes into the drain field lines, it's actually purifying itself. It's trying to meet with the other uh, groundwater. It's, it, that's called uh, regenerating uh, the water, you know, purifying the water because God made it so we can have that water purified again. If, if you if you go and by and looking at a uh, creek, you see rocks in the creek, that's letting you know that's a way that those rocks are cleaning that water because before it goes into another body of water, you know. And that was one of the things that they did in 2007. They, they put the Chesapeake Bay Act in place for all septic systems. You know, it's mandatory now to have your septic system pump. They say every five years, but it depends on the number of people in the house and how you use it. So I tell my clients every three to five years to get it maintained, okay? Uh, so, you know, like I said, uh, grease, paper, a whole lot of chemicals, it's not good for the septic, uh, but, other than that, you know, what also what I noticed too, if you got a person that's sick, uh, is on a lot of medication, well, of course, when they use the bathroom, you know, all of that stuff is going to go into the system. And I mean, the, se the septic tank takes care of it, but it has a different smell, okay? <laughs> Believe it or not, the septic system isn't as... I would say gross smelling as you think. I used to think that too, until I stopped, got into the industry. When I, I can tell a, a, a difference between a sick septic system and a well-maintained one. And basically a sick septic system is a person that's been on a lot of medication and it's dumping into it. It gives it a very peculiar smell, whereas the other one doesn't, you know, some that you can tolerate. Any other, any other questions? Yes. Uh, how much does it cost to pump or service the tank? Okay. Well, it's different prices. Uh, I can only go by my price because everybody quote their price according to their overhead. Okay. Uh, we, right now, we're charging to just to pump the tank, one tank, we're charging anywhere from 315 to 325 to just pump the tank. Okay. Uh, and if the tank is over uh, 1250, then of course it's gonna be a little bit more, okay? Uh, so when I when a realtor called me and asked me for a septic inspection, okay, this is what we do. We pump that, that we, it's, it's gonna be more than 325, but we pump the tank, we uh, remove everything out of the tank because you got some pumps that just pump down the water, but we remove everything, the sludge and everything. Then we open up the distributor box. We open up the distributor box because that tells us how that system is, uh, what it's doing, you know. You know, we look for several things when we open up that tank. We're looking for making sure no water is coming back from the drain field. We make sure that the level is where it needs to be. And uh, we look for uh, that, it's, it's not a lot of grease in it. You know, look for certain things because that'll kill your system as well. So, uh, and then we also run a test to make sure that our drain field is working, taking the water, okay? Then what we also do, which mo most people don't, we go inside the house and we adjust the toilets. And they say, well, why do you need to adjust the toilet? Because if when you got a leaky toilet, the water is constantly running, you know? Even when you're on city sewage, Therefore, if the water is constantly running, you're gonna always have a drip. It's going right into the septic tank, okay? Uh, if you was on city sewage, it's leaking, and then you look at your water bill, you say, oh my God, why is my water bill so high? 
because your toilet has been leaking, you know, and that could be a simple fix. That could be a simple fix by adjusting the, the mechanics that's inside the bowl of the, of, of the uh, toilet, or it could be changing, you know, changing that out. Uh, and then uh, mainly, or you can adjust a certain part inside the uh, toilet, you know. So we look for those things. And then uh, another thing that we look for is we always ask the person if the house has been vacant for a long time, then that means there's no edge, no, um, the septic system is kind of like dead, but it doesn't mean that it's not working. It just means that it needs some type of, uh, what do you want to call it? It needs to be brought back to life, you know. Uh, so we run, we do water tests to make sure that uh, the water, the drain for the lines are taking the water, you know, because if the property has been sitting been sitting for a long time, a lot of times it might it'll probably have water in the tank, but nothing is really going out to the fields field lines, and we need you need to see that. You know, you need to make sure your uh, pumper shows you that or whatever. So when we when we go out, we, we like to take pictures and video, make sure that everything is doing what it's supposed to do. When okay. you um when you go out for an inspection for a realtor, um, generally what's the cost for an inspection? And then generally, what are some like problems that, or are there usually problems that you see, or do you just recommend usually being pumped? Um, what, what do you generally see when a realtor says, hey, I need a septic inspection? Well, we, what we do is we come out, we pump it, we open up the distributor box, and we're looking to make sure there's no sludge in that box. If we find that there's sludge in the box, uh, we, we would like for them to address it, for us to address it. Uh, and uh, so, because that tells us a lot about the, the, the system, you know. Because see what happens, the only reason why the sludge gets in the box is because the person has waited too long, way overdue, before they had it pumped. And that's the whole thing in a nutshell. You don't want a whole lot of sludge in the box. And so the prices are different. It depends on, uh, you know, I have to put in where I'm going. Uh, actually, the, the pumping the, of the tank, uh, doing oh, the, digging up the distributor box and running my tests and also going inside the house, okay, and making the adjustment, okay. So if everything is good and it's just uh, a conventional system, you, you're probably looking at about five, 85, anywhere between five and 600, okay, it just depends. Um, so that would be for an inspection and to pump it. Right, because if you call me and ask me just for an inspection letter, I'm going to say, I, I, I need to pump it, you know, because that's how I can tell what's going on. I'm not going to go over there and take a look and not do anything and say, oh, give me your letter. I, we don't do that. Maybe you might find some other people that will, but we're, we're not doing that because we, yeah. we, we, you know. And then what areas um, do you mainly service for going out and doing inspections, like for Virginia well, and North Carolina? I, I uh, do mostly all of Virginia. Um, I've gone as far as, um, I have done some in North Carolina, Elizabeth City, um, Gates County, Caratech. Uh, don't go too far. Maybe maybe I would say about 15, 20 miles outside of the line. You know? Okay, well, that's, okay. That's awesome. Now let's say um, someone wants to buy a house and they just so happen that they need to install a septic tank. Just say it's a conventional septic tank. What mm -hmm. would the additional cost they would be looking at to install that septic tank? Okay. Well, let me tell you how it would work because there's a lot of components involved. All right. So if a person comes and they their septic system fail and there's nothing can be done but have a replacement, I would which this is what we do. We take a look at what's already there. And I talk to the agent or the homeowner and say, well, look, you already have a conventional system. Let's see if you, you do need, this system is not passing. It's not passable. So let's see if you can get a, get your, get this system grandfathered in to another, to a, the same type of system, but do an upgrade on it. It's called a voluntary upgrade. Okay. So when 
that happens, <clears throat> I instruct the fellow who I'm working for, the agent. I said, well, I just can't pass it. It's just not going to pass it. What I want you to do, you're going to have to call one of my designers because I don't design the systems, okay? So, and I talk, have a talk with him and I say, well, look, the system, I haven't seen any sewage on top of the ground, but the system is so outdated and it's really not taking the water like it should. And it's not, and you can't, it's nothing we can do to restore it back, okay? So I'm, I need a volunteer upgrade. So they'll come out, they'll basically do an assessment like I did, and then they will uh, draw up probably a, a new drain field in a different location. And if the house is, uh, say, the, say the house, say the septum was uh, put in 25 years ago, because that's about the life of a septic system, about anywhere from 25 years, maybe it might can go 30, but that depends on the condition of the soil. Okay, if you're in an area, and it also depends on the condition of the water table in that area. So if you, uh, uh, in a place where it's really very sandy, you know, the soil is sandy because you know water travels through sand very well. So then that's a good thing. So that means that that system more than likely can be grandfathered in and uh, have a, a newer, uh, updated uh, drain field. And uh, sometimes the septic tank itself might be in good condition. And sometimes the designers say we can use the same septic tank, but we definitely need new drain field lines and new distributor box, okay? So then you're talking about anywhere from, um, let's say, anywhere from 12, 12,000 on up. You know, it just depends on what that designer puts on it. Sometimes he might put a treatment unit on it, you know? Which is, which is another tank the uh, effluent before it goes to the drain field, okay? And also, uh, once you get, once they come in and do that, they draw it up, okay? And then it has to be submitted through the health department. Health department has to approve what the designer drew up, okay? Now their fee is separate from the installer's fee, okay? Uh, then the other step that we didn't have to do, it has to be done now, is recorded at, this, at, the, at the courthouse. So uh, you're talking about <clears throat> anywhere from three to four weeks before you, once that system has been uh, failed and, and it can't be brought back and it needs to be upgraded, voluntary upgrade, it's, it's, it's taking you about a good four weeks before you get all your paperwork uh, approved. Once you get that approved or, or once you get that thing drawn up, you can go to someone like me and say, okay, price this for me, okay? But in the meantime, I cannot, as a, uh, as a installer, get ready and um, do the install until I get the final approval letter from the health department. And everything had to be, has, had, would have had been recorded at the courthouse. So what, what that does, it protects the, like when the person getting ready to sell again, it protects them from that. So that's why it's important to do that. And they are very adamant about that. And now it used to didn't take that long, but now since we're in this new era of COVID, everything is, is backed up for about a week or two, you know, <laughs> which is not. So you can get around that too. If you have a person that's, uh, cause I just finished one uh, that, the septic failed and they needed a new system. And they said, well, we can we close still? So basically you can't close. Every, all parties have to agree to put that fee in escrow, okay? And have, and then you can close. Cause I, cause I, I got a couple of them in escrow now. So uh, basically, cause most people just don't have the money straight out to, to have that repair done, okay? So, you put it in escrow, and then the, 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 this uh, installer has 60 days to have it installed, you know. So it doesn't take no 60 days to do that, you know. It depends on how backed up the installer is. But anyway, once you get that done uh, and you fill out your completion statement and, and everything has to go through, designer, he has to uh, fill out his paperwork. Installer has to fill out their paperwork. 
and then I submit the bill to the, uh, matter of fact, it would be the uh, realtor and then they just submit it to the title company and then they would pay because that money is already sitting there in escrow. Okay. So, right. So now, a um, couple questions with that. Uh, with the designer, uh, what you said their fee is separate. What is their fee generally to design? Well, it, it really depends. I, I can't really say what their fee is because I don't really, I mean, I have to pay them a fee too for them coming out and inspecting my work. <laughs> but they, um, some of them charge anywhere from $1,400, you know? So I can't. You know, would, once they I would, a, would they uh, need a survey um, as well to design it? Well, they are going to ask for a site plan, you know, uh, and you I should already have, you should already have that. Most most I would say do, but some still don't. Um, so I guess if they don't have the site plan, they'd have to get a survey, and then that way the well, designer can design. Well, um, mm, mm. You know, I I don't know if I, I don't know about that question because most of them that I deal with, uh, they might have to get the site plan if they have some discrepancies about uh, where the uh, property property lines are. But most of the most of them, uh, most of the homeowners know where their property lines are. Sure. You know. Sure. What I mean? So if they here's an, another another tidbit, if if that property already has a septic system on it, and, and it just fell. What the homeowner needs to do is go to the health department, make a call to the health department and say, can you send me the old permit that was on this system? Okay. When you see that, you normally see a, a site plan or, you know, some type of, of property boundaries. Okay. Uh, I One time I ran into a uh, situation where we had to put in the system. It was on, matter of fact, it was on Kings Highway. Yeah, or in drivers. And <clears throat> we went out there and the septic system was not taking the water, okay? And, and the tank was too small too for the, for the next homeowner. And this man, he really needed to sell the property because you know because he needed the proceeds to take care of some other stuff. Well, to make a long story short, we got in there and we asked the homeowner, we said, well, where do you know where the property lines are? And uh, he 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 thought he knew, but he really didn't know <laughs> because uh, we got we had got we had to get a permit. But what ended up happening was we got ready to install the the tank, and we said, okay, the tank has to be sitting ten feet off of the house. So the original tank that was there was nowhere near ten feet off of the house. So we pushed it back, you know, some, and then came and saw what we were doing. He said, well, I'm just giving you a heads up. This tank that you're getting ready to put in is really on somebody else's property. And he's like, wow. So it stopped everything. We had to stop everything and go back to the homeowner and say, well, you know, you told us that the property line was such and such. But so then what ended up happening is they had to get a surveyor to uh, let us know where the property line was. So where we wanted to put it on the side of the house, it would have ran, it would have been three feet over to somebody else's property, even though that was a vacant lot. But we said, well, what's gonna happen when these new homeowners come in and if they wanna sell the house, they're gonna run into some problems. So what we did was we talked to the uh, to the homeowner and we got the health department involved. We said, well, this is what we can do. We'll, can, we can take those tanks and put them in the back. Use the, even though the old system was there, we could uh, put those tanks in there and curve it around to where the drain field is. Cause the drain field was sitting in the front, the tanks in the back. So that's what we did and that way nobody would be, uh, you know, everything would be cool when they got ready to sell or what have you. So when you getting ready to do a install, we do have a consultation with our designer to make sure 
that uh, we, you know, we're right in the property lines, you know, because that could be a big hassle. Matter of fact, there's a, pro a property on White Marsh Road who's having that problem now. Uh, and all they need is about two, let me see, two, three feet. But for some reason, the family doesn't want to give them two or three feet. And so designer designed it somewhere else, but I kind of got out of it. I, I, I'm, I'm looking to see what they're going to do because they have, they can't sell to the situation done, you know, taken care of. So did that answer your question? Yeah, it, it did. I, I appreciate that. Um, now, another thing is once, let, let's just say everything is set and done, designer is good, you guys are good with the health department, you guys are ready to install it. How long does it take to install it at that point? Uh, well, it, if the weather, it has a lot to do with the weather too. So it, 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 only, like a, it only takes about three or four days. Okay. okay. Three or four days. Uh, and it also depends on uh, what type of tanks that designer wants on that in that system? Okay, now because you got you got top seam tanks and you got mid seam tanks, and if the if the uh, if the designer is requiring top seam tanks, it might take a little bit longer because every everybody's schedule has to coincide with one another. You know what I'm saying? I have to get those tanks special delivered. But it's a, if it's a mid seam tank, I can go pick that tank tank up myself out of North Carolina, you know. And uh, but you know, at one point, a, a installer could always put down mid seam tanks, but they found out that some installers weren't really making those tanks watertight, you know. But we, you know, because we used to make tanks years ago, and we we know how to make them watertight, you know. But, uh, and a lot of the reasons why they want top seam tanks is because the water level, the water the table might be really high in that area, you know, so they rather have, have it a big, and those tanks are not, they're, they're very, very heavy. You need a special truck to actually take those top seam tanks and, you know, set them properly. So, you know, but if everything, if everything's on schedule, take you no more than about, I would say three to four days. Maybe you might run into a week, you know, oh, because we're not really supposed to do a whole lot of digging when it's really wet because then you're looking at caving in. Because, you know, uh, the type of line of work that we're in is very, uh, it could be unsafe because we want to make sure we don't have any cave-ins. Um, you know, the, the ground is not too muddy uh, and, and, and all sorts of things. So you got, when you start getting into the winter months, you're getting into a uh, high water table and the soil just not being dried out enough. You know what I'm saying? Because right now the water table is, is rising. And, and being that we live in Virginia, in this area, we got a high sea level, you know? But uh, so we're, we're able to uh, do some installs all year round, but it just depends. It depends on where the location, the soil, the water table and all of that stuff and the timing you know cool okay now um last question here um when someone needs to go get their tank service like you said the three to five years uh mm -hmm. they need a full-on service just to make sure everything's good uh mm -hmm. is that that's not the 550 to 600 dollar cost is it no uh-uh no okay. what, what uh, is that normally, that normally when a person needs to have it serviced okay just a pretty a much uh uh, septic tank pumping. You know, I'm I'm charging anywhere from three fifteen to three twenty five, okay. And uh, that's what I call servicing. Now, on a conventional system, I'm not digging up no distributor box, okay. But if I have to dig up a distributor box on that particular call, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to charge maybe about one hundred and fifty dollars to dig that up, you know. Okay. Everything is done through hard shovel. You know, the guys got to get down there and find out where it is and you know, got to uh, shovel it to make sure they can get to the top, you know. And sometimes we ran into some that it was just so deep that we had to bring a piece of equipment out there to actually dig, you know, to find it. We might know where it is, but it's just too much digging for one man, you know. So we'll use a piece of machinery. 
we find we do that when the system is really old, because when it was old, they used to dig those things, put them in the ground really, really deep. So, but yeah. So overall, a, a septic tank is a ton cheaper than a normal city, like, because I yeah. can your SD every single month. Right. My public utilities and all that. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if it's only just say $500 every five years. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that yeah. That's pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's what, but a lot of people are scared because they don't understand the process. But yeah, it's much cheaper. Yeah, and I think a, a scare too would be like just thinking it would smell like you were talking about, but mm -hmm. you you can't really notice anything if it's just a normal system working. Right, exactly. You don't you don't smell it, you know, uh, and you can tell like when you you can also tell when you need your uh, septic system uh, paid attention to when it starts flushing slow, and when you hear a gurgling sound like you know that tells that was going to be my question. Uh huh. And when you when you see that that gurgling sound and it's going down slower than normal and you know you're on a septic so it's it, it's telling you right then it, it, it's time to get new pump and it's going to give you at least when you start hearing that gurgling sound you have at least a good maybe a week or two before you actually get it pump so it does give you a sign you know that that's really good to know especially so uh you know uh -huh. when to get a service. Right, uh-huh. But like I said, uh, two, uh, three, three, anywhere from three to five years. Some people can go maybe a little bit longer, but I don't really like to go over five years. It's it's you well know? worth it if it's only- It's four. worth it, yeah. yeah. It's well worth it. Uh-huh. So much cheaper. As in, and, and you're off grid too. You're not on with the city. <laughs> <laughs> that's right because i'm telling you i get that bill every month yeah <laughs> exactly are you paying storm water you paying you yeah you paying uh, uh sewage storm water um what else you paying it's like three different three it, three it, different it, things it, it adds up too yeah it adds up <laughs> so man and so let me say this too like if you got a property that the city sewage is going through that neighborhood and the person um had a septic system, but they didn't get connected when everybody else was getting connected to city sewage. And they find that they're having problems. Um, you, They might give them the opportunity to stay on septic, but most of the time they're gonna require them to move to city sewage. But it's all about money. <laughs> See, I mean, you know. 100%. <laughs> and Actually, a good- One huh? other thing I was thinking of, uh, there's a, a rule of thumb, isn't it like where it's like, I don't know the exact word, but it's like two tanks or two whatever equals one bedroom. Is that the, what's the rule of thumb with that in a bedroom? Oh, well, if you got um, a three-bedroom three, three bedroom house, what it is, uh, they're, they're saying that you can have two people in that bedroom, okay? They give you a, they give you a, a person Let's see, 60, this is, I think it's 60 gallons a day to be able to, that's a lot of water, 60 gallons for one person, you know, because that tank can hold, that tank holds a lot. Like I'm just look, look, looking at a thousand gallons. <clears throat> so for every bedroom, you have two people. So the bedrooms determines how big your system is going to be. You know, to and accommodate. What, what, what do they call that? Is it like a valve? Like it needs two valves per bedroom? Like what? What is that called with the septic tank? They call it. Uh, they call it the. the they call it daily flow. So they, they say two two people to one bedroom. So so basically, you can have six people, two four two four six the, the parents and two uh and two bedrooms two yeah four six six people, so. That would be that your daily flow probably would be about 450 gallons per per minute or something like that. But if you got a say for instance, you got three bedrooms and you got 10 people in the house, well, of course, that's not gonna be sufficient enough for your septic system. That means they, they're gonna have to add on more lines, might need to add on more lines at a bigger tank, you know. Uh, because it this this septic system just can't accommodate all of that. 
with all those many people. They they when they when they build in a house, they design the house according to the number of bedrooms and how many people are gonna live there. It's not based on the bathrooms, it's based on the bedrooms. Right. That that makes total sense. All right, so two lines per bedroom. I guess you could if you want to think of it like that, you could. Yeah. Or sometimes it might not be, because let's let's say when they're designing it, they might say uh three bedrooms, it might have five lines, but those lines are long. You can okay. It might be uh most of the lines are anywhere from uh 60 to 80 feet long. Wow. You know, that's coming out. It's when you really see it, when you see one put in it, when I, you know, it's very interesting. It's, it's like wow, amazing, you know, how this thing is under the ground, all these pipes under the ground, taking care of your, your own site waste water treatment, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's awesome and unbelievable. And I mean, it juice. If you've got a well, solar, and septic, that's that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Cause um, cause of course, now when you got uh, sep uh, uh, well, your drain fill line's got to be a hundred feet from the uh, well, okay. And the reason why, cause you don't want any water, you don't want no water contaminating the well water, you know. So, but yeah, I mean, I mean, how would, many I would, feet did you say it was? A hundred feet. Hundred feet from the drain fill lines, the well do, and you got different types of well. You got uh, you have uh, shallow wells and deep wells, okay, and make and make sure when you're selling your properties that the well is good too, you know. So you want to do a well test, a water test, to make sure there's no bacteria uh, in the water, and uh, so we do that as well, huh? So the well test. Uh, the well test um, would be a separate person, correct? Huh? The well test. Say? The well test would be a separate person. Well, I do well tests. We do well tests. Oh, okay. Well, what what um I guess what's the cost on a well test as well? Okay, well the well test can be can range anywhere from uh starting at um about 285 on up. I put in some different variables, okay. Uh, if that well is good, no bacteria was found in it when I did it the first when I did the first test, it'll probably run you about about, about 285. Okay, but now if that well comes back with um, bacteria in it, then I gotta go and chlorinate that well. And that's time consuming. So the price goes up, you know, and I gotta keep um uh, chlorinating that well until I get no bacteria. Makes sense. The main, two, the main two bacterias that we look for is E. coli and coliform. Now, um, say, uh, so technically if there's a well and a septic there, we can call you up and say, hey, Rosalind, we need a well and septic test. Is there right. like a, a combo package that you have like for an inspection on both? What would that look I, like? I, I, I do it separately. Okay, so two separate tests, and so right. the well would be two eighty five and up, and then the the septic uh, would uh, be the you have to pump it and then to inspect it, so somewhere between five fifty and six hundred. Uh huh. That's uh -huh. that's for just for okay. one tank. Now yep. somebody you know, on one tank. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you come across often where there's two tanks at the house if it's like a? Oh big yeah, house? I I do I do I do, because I come across. Uh, uh, systems that are not that are that are not conventional and uh most of them are the mound systems and it, most of the times i have to uh, pump every tank so that's where the price would go up and then i would i probably try to give the person a break out instead of me charging them 325 i probably ch charge them 285 a tank if it's got two other tanks give you a little break makes you know? sense and then no, i also Go ahead. And also, we have to check the floats and all the electrical. And sometimes we have to do a pressure test to make sure there's no leaks in the leach field of the mounds. You know, so that's so when you start getting into them engineered uh, inspections, 
that's a little bit more involved. Okay. Chris, is that, um, I mean, I guess is it for Austin and, and yourself, is that is that cost solely on the buyer of the property or do you, is it usually you see a split between the buyer and the seller? The seller no, well, mainly, mainly um, it's the seller usually pays for it, but there are some cases where a person is buying a property and they know uh, if a person is buying it and they know that there's a septic system there, they might say, well, we want it done and we'll pay for it. It just depends on how your contract is made up. Yeah, in most cases, uh, I think the buyer will pay for the inspection and then the uh -huh. seller will pay for the repairs as long as uh -huh. it's in the cap. Um, right, uh -huh. percent cap right. falls under well and septic. That's, that's true, that's true. But it just depends. I, I don't really get into, uh, well, I do ask who's, who's requesting this, you know. I do uh, tell my real, realtors, I say, well, look, you're requesting this. And if for some reason the house doesn't go through, the sale doesn't go through, who's going to pay for this? You know, because I have gotten stuck a couple of times where I've done an inspection. Right. And didn't get paid. And it just puts a bad taste, in, you know. So, you know, I try to talk about that up front. And a lot of times, what we do and what we've been doing is we get paid at closing, you know, but now that we're in this COVID. For the inspection or for the repair or for both? Both, both. Okay. Sometimes we do both. It just depends. It just depends. I try, I tell the person, if you, if, if you, if you're working with a client who want to get a septic inspection, uh, th six months before they put it on the market or, before I said, no, let's not do it. Let's wait a little bit. Let's wait at least 30 days out. To do your inspection. Okay. Because basically my letter says at the time that I inspected it, it's good. So I don't know what's going to happen after that. Because I'm not that. guaranteed. Yeah, I'm not really guaranteed. Nobody can guarantee the performance of a septic system because it depends on who's in who's using it, you know? So a person can mess up a septic system in uh, a month by putting the wrong stuff in the tank. Right, so within Put too much days, grease. Yeah, yeah. within uh -huh. 30 days of closing makes sense for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, right. uh, oh. yeah, go okay. ahead, Chris. Um, well, so I was just going to ask, as an agent, um, you know, showing properties um, out my way, septic systems are extremely common, um, and I've been showing a few, actually, and um, I was wondering if there are any common issues that you can, you know, with the naked eye, walk into a home and kind of see that there could be a, some, some potential for issues, um, and what that commonly looks like in, the, in just the, the natural showing aspect. Well, uh... When you get when you have a client that's interested in a house that's on a septic, you you want to be up front. You want to say, okay, uh, this house is on a septic. You might do your homework and call the health department, and ask to look at the permit or see when the how when the, how old the septic is. You know, that's funny. Some of your due diligence, yeah, to find out everything you can as the agent about that septic. Okay. But you still gonna have to have a professional like me to come and do an Correct. inspection. You know what I'm Correct. saying? But yeah. at least you know up front that you know it's on a septic, you know how old the septic is. Because that's one of the things I'm gonna ask you if you call me and say, I need a septic inspection, and I'm gonna ask you, uh, when do you when was the last time they had a service? When was the house built? Is this the original system or what? Okay. You might say, Well, I don't really know. Well, how you gonna find out is you're gonna get that permit from the health department and it's gonna give you a permit. And you could say, well, you know, Roz, I don't really understand what I'm looking at. I can fact email or fax you this permit and I can look at it and tell you where it should be. I can tell you what kind of uh, pipes they have down there, how old it is and all of that, okay? So most people <laughs> that sell their homes is on the subject, they say, oh, we, we've been here 20 years. We haven't had any problems. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of so that's, the homeowner is going to say that because they don't want to uh, 
get involved. They just so you you do you do your due diligence. I know you had stated the the gurgling in the toilets are, is a tall tale cell, tall tale sign. Um, I didn't know if there were under, any other kind of small um, you know attention to detail things within a home that you could test while you're just but walking you, through. But what what you want to do is you want to look in the, look at the yard. You know you can walk the yard. Make see sure if, you don't see if it's, if it's see, causing moisture. Right. See if you see any wet spots in the yard. But of course it's got to be dry when you do that. But not necessarily. Right. But you know, for you, you walk the yard and and, and just look over the terrain of the of the yard or the land, you know. And uh, and then if you see, and if it's really wet, it'll be real green looking. Okay. Cool. That's a week. Uh huh. Well, Rosalind, we really appreciate your time. You have been phenomenal. It's almost been an hour, but you Oh, have, wow. Okay. I, I know. You you have been so great. This has been such great info. Um, yes, we all really, really appreciate your help. And uh, I'll be sure to uh, attach your video uh, to our brokerage uh, and then be able to put your contact info there uh, for okay. uh, whenever someone needs a septic or well inspected. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Rosalind. You're welcome. Okay. All right, bye. Okay. Bye bye.